Oh, I like that. I like that mic. All right, welcome to the Summit Revolution 2013. Where we're going and how we're getting there. The reason for this is simple. Trying to increase communication, making sure everybody's on the same page, and that I think for the most part this whole summit came about because as many people have said to me, Howard, you know, we work hard, we want to get somewhere, we want to do the right thing, how do we get there? We want to know what you're thinking. So today I will attempt to tell you what I'm thinking. So here's the ground rules for this. Let me make this whole presentation. If you have a question, write it down on your piece of paper, and I will answer it at the end of the presentation. Let's not go to our phones, let's not go to our iPads. This way everybody's paying attention, really listening to what I have to say, and there's no confusion. The reason I asked you to bring a piece of paper and a pen is I want you to take notes on how you can contribute. Because what I've attempted to do today is to really spell out what it is we're trying to do in 2013, but more importantly, what's the structure behind it, and after the structure, who's accountable for what, and who's going to be doing what. And throughout the presentation, I'm going to ask you to write down some tasks that I'm going to ask you to do, and so you have a record of those. So really uh, enjoy and get excited for the new vision. I think this is something we need. I think we're in need of structure. I think we're a new, we need some sort of new vision for 2013, and it's really important. All right, this is a picture of my office at home. This is how I prepared for this summit. Literally about a month ago, or maybe two months ago, I said I am burning up with all kinds of things that bother me, that really fuck me up in the head about what we're doing. And so what I did was I took one of these giant post-it pads that are sit on an easel, and I began to write down what I thought needed to be done for the way I do business, the way we run the radio channels, the way we run the television stuff, the way we run the website, and it's actually quite cathartic, and it's really uh, energizing, and I suggest you do it yourself. And this is what I do. When I go home, this is how I prepare, this is what I do about this show. I have never rested on my laurels. I've always felt this show was very, very important. And so doing this was sort of the birth of what you're going to see on the screen today. So why are we here? The desired outcome. I want to enhance everything we do. Everything we touch, I think, needs polishing. And what my job here is today is to com communicate exactly what I want and give you the structure that you need to do it. And you know what? Uh, I am guilty of this. People come to me and say, Howard, yeah, I kind of get what you want to do. I kind of understand it. That's why I started uh, writing all this stuff on my wall, because maybe I'm not communicating that. And this should be very clear today. So that's the desired outcome of today's meeting. And, and what we're going to end up with is clarity. I, sh I think this is going to be very clear. We're going to come up with systems so people know where they belong in the organization. We're going to have structure. Every project we choose will have a definite structure behind it. And there'll be accountability, which I think is probably the most important thing I want to get across today. That when we come out of here, and in the next couple of weeks, 
there'll be accountability. If somebody says they're going to do something, well, we're going to have metrics and we're going to measure it and make sure that they actually do it. So people don't feel alone, that people feel that everyone's doing their job. So here's my vision. Let's go into the area of guests first. This is it for 2013. This was the vision I had in my office. I want weekly an A-list celebrity on our show, and two times a week I want a B-list celebrity. We're on three days a week. Three days a week. The show is, as Gary says, dark. 10, 12 weeks, I don't know. We actually do 112 shows a year. This is a very realistic goal, but how are we going to get there? This is how we do it. Let's remind ourselves who we are. And I don't say this lightly. Our show is the number one place for a guest. And think about this. What is it our show has? 23 million paid subscribers. Who the fuck else has that? We have people who pay to hear a radio show. We had Jewel on today. We go deep into an interview. The woman had an hour. We plugged her new album several times, at least 10 times that I counted. We talked about her life. We had her play. We did a bit with her. We played a song that I wrote. The audience loved it. I know that. I'm judging it from Twitter, the email. She was endearing. She got her plugs. She reached paid subscribers, people who actually have money in their pocket. And we know that these interviews are very effective. Celebrities uh, tweet, gee, best interview I ever had. Fans tweet, they send in emails. Gee, you know, I didn't like Jules so much, but I heard her on your show, and she was fantastic. We've had people like Billy Corgan come in, and their album goes into the top 10. We've had books that have gone into the top 10. We're pretty amazing. But nobody knows it. We're now on satellite radio, and now that we're in satellite radio, we're in sort of our own little protected bubble. But what's happening is people are forgetting that this is the best fucking medium for any guest to be booked on, whether they're in the field of books, whether they're in music, Look at what we do for guests. We have a news department that actually promotes them after they're in. We play their shows over multiple, multiple times. Who is doing this? But who is communicating this to publicists? If I'm a publicist, I'm not sitting and thinking about the Howard Stern show. I'm thinking about some other fucking show that I see on TV. I'm not in the world of satellite. I don't have satellite in my car. I'm not thinking about satellite. We better start fucking telling publicists and everyone else who we are. All of us, this is all of our job. The theme of today's meeting is, this is everyone who's sitting here job. Not just mine, because you know what? If this show isn't here in three years, you don't have a fucking job. We should be blasting it on Twitter. We need to spread the word virally. We had a guy come in who had something called the Ugly App. The dumbest, stupidest, idea on the planet. He walked out of our show, all right, maybe not a millionaire, but a hundred thousandaire. If that isn't the greatest success story in the history of radio, I, I don't know what is. And who the fuck knows about it? Well, the people in this room. Does Madonna's publicist know about it? Probably not. From now on, we share all of our success with the world. We're going to get the word out in 2013. Billy Corgan's album went into the top 10. He was off the radar until us. You know this. This is fact. Billy Corgan was off the radar. He came on our show, and he sold albums. How does every record company in the world not know about this? Because we're not telling them. We're not doing our job. P 
people beg to get on her show, Oprah, because they think she sells books. They think she sells records. Bullshit. Yeah. Okay, great. In some demos she does, but not in, in the world of rock and roll. Somebody puts out a rock book, whether it's a rock record. We're the place to go. Publicists don't think about us. They don't care about us. Some do. Most don't. We get the same results from people, only we don't have a book club to track it. Now we're going to start tracking our successes, and we're going to get them out to the world. How are we going to do it? We're here at Sirius. Probably as a radio show, this is the first time in the history of radio an organization this big. I mean, look at uh, around us. I worked in radio for years. I had maybe one other person working with me. We've got all these people. We also work at Sirius that has an art department, and they have a publicity department, and we're not using them. Now we're going to. We're going to have packets distributed to publicists with all of the information I'm giving you. We're going to become packet and marketing crazy in 2013. And we're going to build relationships with everyone's management. How can we not? We're in satellite. It's not the same reach as terrestrial radio. We got to get the word out. We got to shake hands. It's like we're running for office. It's like we're Jehovah's Witnesses. We knock on people's doors and get guests in here. Guests are the best bit that we can have. An hour with a great guest. And every one of these guests should be on our show. And dare I say, when I fucking hear people say, well, that guy's not going to want to come in here, it's bullshit. From now on, I don't want to hear it. They should be begging us. Every record company should be begging us, because we can actually still sell records. Record labels need to know what we do. I've got walls of gold records attributing sales of these records to our show. And today we made Jewel current and relatable. That's money in the bank for a record company. We made Billy Corgan relatable to our audience. That same audience that pays for radio will pay for music and will pay for concert tickets. We are so valuable. Record companies should work with us. Record labels should be clamoring for us. And we're not doing our job. We're not telling anybody. I'm going to give you a story. This is a letter, an email my wife got from Jenny Hutt. You guys know who Jenny Hutt is? She does? OK. Jenny Hutt does a show here on Sirius, for those of you who don't know. I think she has a team of one person, Jenny Hutt. This letter is not that effective in terms of what's written on it, but what it is, it says, Dear Beth, hi, my name is Jenny Hutt, and here's what I do. I have a show coming up on Sirius. I'd love to have you as a guest. Here's the concept of the show. We're looking to interview you on a treadmill. That's our idea. It's called The Treadmill Show. It's kind of a cute idea, and we're doing this. And here's a sample of questions that we're going to ask you. By the way, Sandra Bernhardt's done the show. We'd love to see you. Well, fuck. I'm jo I want to hire Jenny Hutt. You know why? Because a team of one is putting together this letter. Are we sending letters to people describing what we're doing on the show? No, nope, we're not. We're not. We're not doing jack shit. We make a call. Oh, I don't want to do the show. OK, goodbye. What about a letter? This is the key to this whole thing. We all pitch in. This is all our show. I'm telling you, it's our show. Richard and Sal, if you think your only job is to make phony phone calls or to sit in a writing meeting with Fred, it's not. Write a creative pitch. News team, what's better for you guys when a celebrity, you can interview them, and you see them on the Howard Stern Show? It leads to news, it leads to ideas, and guess what? If the Howard Stern Show isn't here in three years, the news team doesn't have jobs. And I bet you guys this is the best job you've ever had. I bet you it's a lot of fun. But you've got to help this, you've got to help too. Howard TV, you guys do great production. Why shouldn't it be that if someone says, hey, let's pitch Tom Cruise, why don't we have a couple of 
30-second donuts, the best commercials, to show Tom Cruise who's done our show. Billy Joel, David Bowie. Julia Roberts. Paul McCartney. Where's the fucking commercial that we send to publicists? Don't have one. Lady Gaga did the show. We can't ignore something like that. We've got to use that. We've got to maximize it. So I propose that part of our marketing strategy, like Jenny Hutt who sends letters, Howard TV is going to be part of this marketing strategy. And they're going to be making some great pitches. Imagine Howard Stern and an Uncle Sam hat. Howard Stern wants you. And then show them the incredible, in 30 seconds, bam, 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 the clips, this to that. Show them a production piece that tells them a success story like Billy Corgan's and him selling, him, selling those records. Where is the marketing push? Why are we not all involved? It's bugging the shit out of me, and I don't know why we're not. So we're going to tell publishers everything. We work with you to reach your goals. We give you multiple plugs. No one gives you as many plugs as we do. We sell records. We sell books. We sell product. We sell concerts. This is a major push for 2013. And then we begin to email people, and we blast them. And by blast them, I mean every month our team, our core team, is going to make sure that all the key publicists, all the key management, artists that we can get to, are going to be contacted. No one is going to forget that we exist. We are going to be like Moonies. Leverage friends of the court. What do I mean by friends of the court? Whitney Cummings was doing jack shit when we found her. She was in clubs. She was going nowhere fast. Jerry Seinfeld had a show called The Seinfeld Chronicles that was about to go off the air. He used our show. This woman was nowhere when she did our show. John Stewart used to come on when The Daily Show started, and he'd be a regular guest. What happened to this guy? I haven't even fucking seen him in years. On our show. Adam Levine owes us, man. When he was coming in and doing the show, nobody was looking for him before The Voice. And David Letterman, I've done his show I don't know how many times, probably 27 fucking times, and he's only been on our show twice. These guys are friends of the court, which means they're going to get an email. Hey, you know, happy anniversary. It's been... Um, 10 years. Today's the day you were on our show 10 years ago, and we haven't seen you. We were there for you when you started. We were there for you the whole time. Seinfeld, we helped you with Seinfeld. Whitney, where were you? Whitney used uh, Whitney Houston. Whitney Cummings was just on um, the, uh, I don't know, Good Morning America, Today Show. She was on a million shows. She finally has something going on where we'd be interested in her, and she's not doing our show. She does it occasionally. But we weren't top on our list. John Stewart is hotter than a pistol. Why is he not on our show anymore? Let's ask him. Let's invite him to the party. Friends of the court, we expect you to come in le at least two times a year. Yeah, John Stewart should visit us two times a year. I don't think that's too much to ask. I've done his show. We were once your marketing strategy. And now we need you to be part of ours. Payback. Where is the list of people who did our show who we really helped? And why are we not calling on these people to help us in the future? We're talking about the success of the Howard Stern Show. Your job, my job, and this isn't being addressed. So how do we get there? I'm going to put together a core team. I'm not going to go into who's going to be on that core team now. I'm still assembling it, but this is going to be done. It's not like maybe we should do this. This is happening. It's happening by March 1st. There'll be a core team that gets put together that regularly strategizes on how we're going to make this part of my vision come true for 2013. I said to Gary recently, I watched a tape of Lana Wachowski who, I think I'm saying her name right. 
She's the uh, director of The Matrix. She, became, she was a man, she became a woman. The woman was fascinating. And I said, I think she'd be really good on our show, Lana Wachowski. Nobody's had her. She never does an interview, but she sort of came and did a address to people and was comfortable talking about her transition from being a man to a woman. Thing was riveting, the speech was riveting, it was great. So Gary called her, her people declined. Guess that's it. Okay, no Lana Wachowski, bullshit. It doesn't stop there. We should let Lana, Lana Wachowski and her people know who we are. That when we're talking to a male homophobic audience, we have a lot of homophobia in our audience, Howard is a regular speaker on gay and lesbian and transgender topics. He has stood up for the gay community. In the case of Ellen DeGeneres, he asked his audience to boycott J.C. Penney. In the case of Rosie O'Donnell, he stuck up for her when she had a gay cruise and she was attacked for it. We have continually made it our mission to talk to a male homophobic audience and convert them, make them understand that their feelings about gay people are backward, and what better way to move forward and to, never mind preaching to the converted Lana, because that's what you did when you addressed the gay and lesbian uh, community. Preach to the people who really need to hear your message the most. And we can craft a continual campaign to get Lana on the show if that's what we decide to do. And Lana should be, you know, approached every once in a while. She should get an email. Hey, guess who we had on today? Guess what we did today? Look how many movie tickets we sold. She's got to be approached in an organized way by this core team. So, who am I talking to? Yeah, the guys who are considered on the radio show, the tapes team, the news team, Howard TV, and where's Mike Morales? There's Mike. I'm talking to him. I happen to follow Mike on his Facebook page. I don't know how many followers you have on Facebook, Mike, but you know what? You're a guy who's passionate about gay issues. You're passionate about uh, speaking out. And what a wonderful get if you crafted the campaign to get Lana Wachowski on the show. Of course, you couldn't have. You didn't know we were pitching her. But I love your passion about gay issues. And you're someone who should be behind that effort, and you should help us craft that effort because you're very effective on Facebook. Unfortunately, on Facebook, I don't, how many followers do you have? All right, 500 people. I'm talking about getting Lana Wachowski on a show that has millions of people that can really affect change. You work for the Howard Stern Show. Fuck Facebook. You work for the Howard Stern Show. And Facebook is bullshit. It's 500 people. We can reach millions right now. We can affect change. I want all of us working, not just Mike. I thought of Mike because I follow him on Facebook and I know he's passionate about this. But any passion can be pursued through our show. Let's come up with a strategy. David Bowie. New record comes out. Wow. My mind started racing. New record out from David Bowie? Who says more positive things about David Bowie than me? David Bowie, if he does an interview, will probably go on Letterman or some bullshit show like that where they don't say a fucking thing about David Bowie. I'm on here regularly talking about what a genius David Bowie is. Does David Bowie know it? No. How does David Bowie find out about it? Well, maybe he'll subscribe to Satellite. I doubt it. There's got to be an organized campaign. David Bowie's coming out with a new record. He, he did it by surprise. Boom! Our fucking team is on it. He gets the pamphlet that Sirius helped us create. He gets the Howard TV donut right away. He gets it. His publicist gets it. His record company gets it. His management gets it. Fucking Tony Visconti gets it. Because Tony Visconti, his producer, is a friend of our show. He's a friend of the court. We've done Tony Visconti on the show many times. We send those materials to Tony Visconti. We don't call up a record company or David Bowie's management and say, um, would you like to do the show? And then when we get our first no, we give up and say, fuck it, and, and, and we never have him on. Play him the tape of me. 
This is what we need to do. We need to have A-list guests once a week. That's how you get them. Neil Young, ongoing project. I don't know, I talk about, who's talking about Neil Young on a daily basis? What, what media figure? I can't think of one. It's me. I'm blowing this guy on the air every single day, practically. Does he know it? Does he get copies of it? He should be bombarded. He shouldn't be able to go anywhere without this information. Now, when we were on terrestrial radio, this kind of thing happened organically. They'd hear about it. Satellite, it's a closed system. Howard TV, closed system. Neil Young shouldn't be able to shit without hearing somebody talking about me. Why did Neil choose, why didn't Neil choose us? I think I saw Neil on Jon Stewart. Now this is me sitting back in that room. Remember that picture of my, my room and the, and the sheets of paper? I kept writing shit like this down to the point of the, the seething with anger. Angry at myself, angry with this crew because we're not doing this stuff. Now we're going to do it. He chose John Stewart over us. I guarantee you, John Stewart hasn't spent a minute talking about Neil Young on the air. John gave him one plug. Not didn't give him, gave him one plug. Same when uh, I watch rock stars go on there. One plug, and he's gone. But Neil Young doesn't have any, you know, he, management's like, eh, fuck it, Stern's dangerous or whatever. Oh, yeah, they call, they're not even thinking about us. We're not on their radar. We've got to be on their radar. He doesn't know what we do. He doesn't know that we can offer him a live concert at one of those uh, things that they did for Bon Jovi yesterday on Sirius. We can leverage using all of Sirius with a recording art. We bribe them. We offer them stuff. We find out what appeals to them. We have to become part of their marketing strategy. That's what professional organizations do. We say to them, what do you need? Here's what we think we can offer. Eddie Vedder's never done my show. I talk more about Pearl Jam, again, more than Jon Stewart, more than David Letterman, more than Jimmy Kimmel. Eddie Vedder, oh, we can't get him. What do you mean we can't get him? We know Natalie Maine. She's a friend of the court. Let's get the materials to Natalie and say, would you pass these on to Eddie personally? Play tape of me on the air talking about Eddie and singing along to Jeremy Spoke. Show a tape from Howard TV. I think the, the video is strong of the lead singer of Soundgarden, that guy when he was on. Those guys respect each other. Someone's got to sit down and think this through. And we're going to be doing that in 2013. So uh, Kevin Bacon was on. Kevin Bacon. I'm reading the tweets. I wasn't going to watch Kevin's show, but now I am. I really liked him on the Howard Stern show. Well, why wouldn't every publicist in the fucking world receive copies of every tweet? There were tons of tweets, tons of email. Fred compiles this email all the time. All this positive stuff that comes in should be put on a very attractive looking flyer, folder, Jenny Hutt does it. She doesn't have all these people in the room. She wishes she had half of you working on her show. All of those tweets about Kevin's show should have been sent to every major publicist in the country. Look what's going on for Kevin Bacon as a result of our show. They don't know about this stuff. Letterman, Leno, Fallon, Kimmel combined don't have as many listeners. Do you, do you look at the ratings? They're crowing about The Tonight Show. The Tonight Show has about 2 million viewers. If we, in fact, do have 23 million paid subscribers, and what they say is that you can double that amount in terms of who listens, that the average family has two people listening to the radio, and if, in fact, we even have 40 to anywhere between 40 and 60 percent of those radios tuned to us, we beat all these guys. Do publicists know that? No. Do they believe it? No. Are we going to convince them? Yes. That's what we're doing in 2013. 23 million paying customers. And I'm going to say 60 percent. I don't know if that's exactly right, but that's what publishers should hear. They should have it ingrained in them, but they don't. So you fucking love Brad Pitt. Big deal. What good's that doing me? You've said it on the air. Why don't you write him a letter 
But of course, you're going to hand it into this core group of people, the strategists. But you're going to be major in getting me Brad Pitt on the air. And talk about how inspired you were when you were sitting in Kansas and you saw a guy from Kansas make it, that you were ridiculed because you had posters of Brad Pitt on your wall. You were ridiculed on our show. And, and that day that you started crying or something in the studio was phenomenal. Send it to them. We've got video. To, we got a fucking bit. We have a television channel that records all of this. Brad Pitt should see that. And you should write him and say, Mr. Pitt, I need you to come in here and defend me. I want you on this show. And our core group of strategists are going to get that letter to him. Look at what we have at our disposal. Think about it. We have a complete archive of memorabilia, of newscasters saying, forget our Howard 100 News for a second. I'm talking about the video archive contains video of newscasters around the country. Whenever we do something great or something wild or something involves a celebrity, it gets on the news. Can you imagine a publicist receiving a bunch of those edited together in a donut? Today, uh, you know, uh, so-and-so was on the show, and boom, 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 boom. Whoa, what's going on with the Howard Stern show? I get these videos, but no one else is seeing them. We have newscasters around the country talking about the Howard Stern show. Even when Howard Stern signs with America's Got Talent, it was major news. Let the publicists see how important that is. We have an articles archive. We can pull and make these pamphlets up, these email blasts. If people would go into the archives, they'll have everything. Tracy takes this stuff and organizes it with Chris. We have, what a great clip from Private Parts. Remind people that it was out there. Part of the video presentation that Howard TV should be putting together includes the movie Private Parts, a little something of me broadcasting, into the various guests we have, into the various TV shows around the country talking about us. You know. Recently, I was watching a tape, Rachel Ray sitting there. I was listening to the Howard Stern show this morning, and I heard Kevin Bacon on there, and blah, blah, blah. Whoa! That's hundreds of thousands of dollars of advertising for Kevin Bacon. Uh, Wendy Williams, on a regular basis. I was listening to my friend Howard, and he said this to so-and-so. This goes on day and night. Us Magazine, almost every week, quotes something from our show. That should be lifted and turned into a PR piece. Come on. Look at the news we're making here from satellite, and these guys who are in control of these guests don't spend a minute thinking about us. <laughs> so your boyfriend, Rush Limbaugh, you're passionate about him. Okay, but you enjoy him. You've been attacked on this show. You are the guy who says, uh, I'm the lone conservative voice on the show. In a sea of liberals, Mr. Limbaugh, I want you to know I've been fighting the good fight. What dramatic radio would be if Rush Limbaugh showed up on our show? It will make news all over the place. More news, sales for Howard TV, ensuring your job, sales for Sirius Radio, and great radio for us, ensuring all our jobs. You should be marketing that campaign. Mr. Limbaugh, I can't fight this fight alone. It would be legendary radio if you came on the Howard Stern Show. What do you say? Let's plant the seed. It would be great. I would love to interview Rush Limbaugh. It would be great, and the media would love it. And, they, and then more media attention, more blasts out to publicists, and we become the place that not only is talked about, but that becomes the place that publicists, management, they know who we are, they're getting all of this information, and they're like, hey, maybe we should go on the Howard Stern Show and take a chance. There's your letter. Take these maniacs on with me. Send a short video of your classic arguments. Yeah. I love when you get on and you argue passionately. Why shouldn't Rush Limbaugh see that? You go, hey, you know what? This might be kind of fun. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk in there, and there's my angle. I'm going to come in and defend Scott the Pace after all these years. What great radio. And guess what? 
you got a job. Howard TV is going to be around. Because I don't give a fuck what anyone says. People start hearing that Rush Limbaugh is on there. They'll, they'll want to see it. Going back, I don't mean to pick on you, Mike, but again, I was on your Facebook page that day that I was writing, and uh, if you have a lot of passion for gay issues, Michael Jackson, Madonna, you know, and I love that passion, but put that passion into the show, which I know you do, but amp it up this year, 2013. Write campaigns, think about guests. Every one of us. So I get a letter from Ratso the other day, the guy who uh, worked on my book with me, and he says, I'm writing a book with Mike Tyson. And I immediately get on the phone to Gary. I go, Gary, let's book Mike Tyson because Ratso says Mike Tyson wants to come on the show. We've heard this before. Gary calls, long story short. OK, Mike wants to do the show in a couple of months. We've heard this before. So he's sort of booked. It sort of looks good. And I can sort of tell you that it ain't going to happen. Because what's going to happen is they're going to start to plan his tour. And Good Morning America is going to say they want him, or somebody's going to say they want him. And this one's going to want him, and that one's going to want him. And what's going to happen is, eh, we don't need to do the Stern show. When someone says they are interested, when we put this core team together, which will happen in a few weeks, when someone says they're interested in coming on our show and it looks pretty good, that's when the campaign begins. We say, great, can't wait to see you, looking forward to it. By the way, did you know we just had this one on? Here's our donut tape that HTV put together. Here's the pamphlets that we now have that Sirius helped us with their art department. Can't wait to see you, we have a date, you know, blah, 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 blah. Pound them with how many books we've sold. So these guys go, we got to fucking get there. Don't let them forget. Once you got a fish on the hook, don't let it off the hook. And you know, my God, the news department, when we have successes, I want you crowing about it. You are our propaganda arm. So not only are you going to be working with our core team, to put together propaganda pieces to send to publicists. We'll also put it on the radio. And after we put it on the radio, we're going to cut up those pieces and send them to management and publicists. My vision for 2013, an A-list guest a week, two B-list guests a week, and this is how we're going to do it. I mentioned this to some people. You got to think like, it's the Howard Stern show I worked for. How do we get the word out? So set up a fake Twitter account. Become 10 different people. I don't give a shit. And then when, we, when our core team says to you, we want to get Lady Gaga on the show, they announce it on Moldred, and all of a sudden, Lady Gaga, I, I'm telling you, every celebrity reads their Twitter stuff. Every celebrity starts getting just random things from fans. Hey, when are you going to do the Howard Stern show? We want you on the show. And they're getting all this publicity material. And they're getting, and they're getting bombarded. And it works. I said before, a Jehovah Witness, they bang on the door. We've got to bang on people's doors. They're forgetting about us. And I'm pissed. OK. So we're going to have a core team. It's going to be about six or seven people who are going to head this up. They're going to meet weekly, but everyone in this room, I'm telling you, is responsible for involvement, pitching guests, and strategizing. It's up to us. If we don't do this, uh, I think we're in trouble. The meeting's going to start March 1st, 12 p.m. of this core team, and they're going to be calling on you, and they're going to be telling you what they need. This is what this team's going to have. You will be having call clinics. What does that mean? That means when we start making calls, we're all going to sit in. We're going to hear what they have to say. We're going to have weekly publicist lunches, touching people, looking at people, pitching people, and whining and dining them. We will actively pursue A-list guests with tracking. So I'm not just talking a good game. There will be systems in place to track what you've done. 
Have you helped this effort? Have you really made some sort of contribution? Well, I'm going to get a sheet. It's just like with Muldred. On the monologue stuff, I get a sheet. I know who writes the most jokes. I know whose jokes I use. I'm going to know everything about our business. Nothing will escape me. So this team will have brainstorming sessions, outreach campaigns based on whatever industry that person happens to be in. If it's, we're going we're gonna to tailor to that person's industry. If they're selling a book, if they're selling a record, we will tailor make that campaign and the outreach will be tracked. We will know when the last time is that we approached Lady Gaga. Everything will be tracked. So if you're not doing your job, I'll know. So this is what the chart's going to look like. Who do we want? How do we pitch them? When did we pitch them? And when are we going to touch them again? So this core team that I put together will track that way. I want Tom Cruise. When's the last time you pitched him? When did we touch base with his management? This is something that came to me in a dream, a 2013 handbook of success. We're going to write down every bit of success we have. So if a publicist calls our core team and someone isn't quite sure what the pitch is, they're going to open the handbook and say, hey, by the way, did you know we did this, we accomplished that, we accomplished this, we accomplished that, we did this, we did that. We're going to fucking give them all an avalanche of stuff that we're doing. I wrote down, Steve Brandano, you're now in charge of this. For some reason, I saw you as maybe being useful there. I'm not 100% sure of that. But I'm starting to think about what components of our show, who goes where, and what teams. This handbook will include who's been on the show, how they achieve success, and this book will help us in every single way when we make a pitch. And that's going to be done. It drives me nuts that we work at this company that has all of these resources, and we're not using them. They've got a booking department, they've got an art department, they've got a promotions department. We've got to engage with them. We've got to be able to say to an artist, we're not only going to put you on here, but maybe we'll get you a concert. Um, things between, uh, Sirius has treated us in a very odd way, but we're going we're gonna to fix that. You know, I've heard Scott Greenstein say, uh, oh, why would we put them on your show? Like, we're the enemy. Right, Gary, there was some comment made. I forget who the artist was. Why would we put them on your show? Well, what are you, fucking high? You put them on our show because we're the only channel anyone's listening to. So we're going to begin using their booking department. We're going to use their art department for sure. All right. So those are our guests. But here's the next thing. So now we've gone to a lot of trouble to get a guest. We put together a core team. We're trying to get everyone in here. I finally get the fucking publicist up here who controls about 10 to 20 acts that we're trying to get up here. We finally get the artist up here and they walk into the fucking radio station and we look like, some people around here look like zombies from Walking Dead. We look like a college radio station. We look like we have homeless people working here. And I've got to tell you something, it's off-putting and scary. We've got to work on our appearance. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is when we're on the air. If you're walking through the halls and you're going to be seeing celebrities and you represent this radio show and this core team has worked for six months to book someone and then the publicist walks in or the management walks in and they look and they go, oh, this show is so gross. This is their feeling. Oh, look at them. They look like bums. They don't know what they're doing. You've just blown it for me. And you've blown it for yourself. So what I would do is I'm going to just tell you, go the fuck home and go get dressed for work. And I'm not saying we're a suit and tie organization, not everyone, but, you know, 
Uh, Jason, I've commended you for looking better at work, and I appreciate it because you are in contact. People see you in the halls. Uh, Gary, you too. Will always dresses well. I mean, he greets people. He's wearing a sweater. The guy looks put together. You guys, we don't work in some far-off place. The guests come through, and they see you. And if you look like you're a fucking goddamn bum, I am telling you, you will scare people away. I can't tell you how many shows I've done where I'm a guest, and I walk in, and whether I like it or not, I evaluate people, and I go, wow, this looks like a fucking dump. It's like a college station. I went to do Jon Stewart. They looked a mess. His writers were hanging out in the hall. It's really intimidating, and I didn't feel good. I didn't have a good vibe. I probably wouldn't go back, just based on that. So we've got to think about our image. Uh-oh. The server name or address could not be resolved. Help. Okay. Oh, thank you. God bless. Monday through Wednesday, especially guest days. You got to look put together. You just got to. You can't scare off my guests. You can't do this to this core group. If Scott DePace happens to write a letter to Rush Limbaugh that has been crafted, honed, put into the core group's hands, we've waited six, seven months, we've worked this guy to death, he walks in, and he sees, I'm not going to single anyone out, but there's a couple of people around here, you just look fucking scary and, and not put together. And this goes for everyone, including me. Upgrade your appearance. No schlubby dress. No bum homeless look. You got to look nice or I'm going to send you home. That's it. I need your help on this. So we're the brand. The Howard Stern Show is maybe the coolest, hippest place to work on the planet. People die to come visit. People pay thousands of dollars to come sit and watch us do the show. You're the brand. Will, I know you're an Eagles fan. You like to wear the Eagles uniform, but fuck the Eagles uniform. Fuck them. Fuck your Eagles. You represent the Howard Stern Show. Wear the fucking Howard Stern Show logo. And you know what? Maybe, two th not maybe, we will 2013. I'll, I'll make a jacket. I'll make a shirt. Whatever the fuck it's got to be. Ronnie, the limo driver, where are you? I see Ronnie. Ronnie, I'm watching Howard TV, one of the best Howard TV specials, and it's you racing the car with John Liebman. Love this special, but what are you busy doing? You're busy putting the Rick's Cabaret decal on your car. Fuck Rick's Cabaret. They don't pay your fucking bills. The Howard Stern decal should be on there. We'll make you one. You come to us if you want one. It's all about the Howard Stern show. You know why? Because... We've, it's up to us to get the word out. And it's up to us to know that we're the fucking coolest place on the planet to work. We got to polish the brand in 2013. We got to stay relevant. We got to stay cutting edge. We got to move from college radio station to the number one radio show in the country. There isn't one radio guy in the world that wouldn't give his left nut to work here. I know, I hear from him. Guys with morning shows, they want to leave their morning show and come work with us. Our green room embarrasses me. So think about it. The core group has put together a campaign to get Eddie Vedder, or I don't know who the fuck it is, somebody in here. Tom Cruise. Finally agrees. We get him in. And our green room looks like a dump. We're going to get rid of that whale drawing. We're going to start putting up pictures that show us off gold, platinum records that we've helped sell, awards that we've won. We're going to change that green room. We're going to change the entire compound. We're going to clean it up. Everything hanging on the walls will promote our success. Tell the story of our greatest moments. Gold records, broadcast awards. Where are our tellies? Okay, we paid for them, but so what? Most people don't know that. Where are they? Who has, who has the tellies? Do we know? You got them? You have them? Bring them in. Hang them on the walls. 
what better, you finally have a publisher stuff here, and our walls look like jack shit. We're looking at Jeff the Drunk. Yeah, it's fun, but you know what? I know a publicist who's not in our culture goes, ew, he's gross, this show's like weird, whatever, who knows what's in their head. I want them to walk in and see success. I want the red carpet rolled out for them. Now, I don't mean figuratively, I mean literally. I had a wonderful experience years ago. I did The Tonight Show with Jay Leno before we were on the outs. I got out of my car. They rolled out a red carpet for me. I was embarrassed. It was a little over the top. Fuck. I've never forgotten it. We will buy a red carpet. And when a guest walks in, we will roll out the red carpet. And they will like this. And they will get their asses kissed. And it will make a difference. They walk in. They roll out the red carpet. They walk into a green room that says success, what we've achieved. Hey, it's pretty cool. They get a breakfast. Oh, this is suddenly like real-time radio. Like, this is a big deal. This is a pretty good place. I mean, we are acting now like they're doing, like, 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 like they're doing, we're doing them a favor. At, they're doing us the favor. And they get bombarded with Howard 100 News, and they get bombarded with Howard TV and a camera. Now look, I, um, I can't tell you, I went over to CNN to do an interview with Piers Morgan. I go in, I agreed to do a one hour interview with him. I thought I was being pretty gracious. Uh, Ralph was with me, you can tell you. I walk in, and they got a camera on me. I haven't done hair, I haven't done makeup. And I don't want to be filmed that way. I don't want to be video. But then again, I'm going like, I don't want to be a dick, so like, okay, I'll let them video. Nobody's asked my permission, and I'm aggravated. I'm really pissed. I'm never going on the Piers Morgan show again. It has nothing to do with Piers. Piers was great, the show was great. I don't want to go through it. We are not looking at our business life from the perspective of a performer. When Jewel walks in, and if she hasn't put her makeup on, or she's just fucking feeling premenstrual, and she walks in, and we got the camera there, Howard TV, Lisa G, I want to interview you, blah, 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 blah. I mean, fuck you. I'm never coming back. Not coming back. I wouldn't come back. I'm telling you, I would not come back. I've been interviewed all over the place. So I'm real fucking edgy. I'm real touchy about this shit. When I do Letterman, I am never photographed ahead of time until I'm ready. Now, it's a different story if our core team says to the publicist or the manager, whoever's coming, hey, we do have a TV show, we have a news department, would it be all right? You never approach the celebrity, because what happened to me appears, they came up to me, they go, Howard, would you mind if we talk uh, to you on camera? And you know what I said? No, it's no problem because I don't want to be a dick. I can't be tagged as the guy who's a dick. They didn't go to my agent who was with me because they know the agent would say no. We've got to be aware of the experience of somebody coming into our station. It's got to be the full experience. The red carpet comes out. There's no scary looking fucking college looking guys walking around in the halls who look really kind of threatening who look like college kids. There's food. The halls look great. Awards. Wow, look what these guys have accomplished. No pre or post interviews without a, 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 a previous, uh, an okay. No one except guest relations people are permitted in the green room talking to the guests. No bombarding. It looks like a fucking zoo out there. You've got to leave people alone. Tim, you can't go in the green room and ask people questions like Quentin Tarantino. You just can't. You can't do it. There's got to be one person assigned from our core team. It's got to be organized. If you come across one of these people in the hall, look professional. Here's where we fall short. We had an experience years ago, Bon Jovi. John Bon Jovi was going to do us a favor. He couldn't get upstairs. Couldn't get in the building. You know what he said? Fuck you guys. He tried to get in once. 
Second time he gave up and said, fuck you, he was pissed. Who the fuck are we? Bon Jovi's a big star, sold 80 million albums, or some ridiculous amount like that. He's doing us a favor, and he can't get into the building. 2013, what happens? When Bon Jovi or anybody else comes into this building, there's an escort waiting for them in the lobby. They're brought up in the elevator. They're escorted in and out of the green room. They're escorted to and from the bathroom. They're escorted in and out of the studio. They're escorted to the elevator and down to the lobby, no exceptions. The person who's going to do this is Ronnie. When I left the Jimmy Kimmel show the last time, about two weeks later, I get a box in the mail with a lovely thank you note. Picture um, of, of myself and Jimmy, framed the Jimmy Kimmel show, and a beautiful note. I was impressed. I was like, wow, what a nice memento. And Jimmy's now always sitting on my desk because I like the picture. Job done. Publicist, management, and talent get flowers, a picture, a thank you, a note, something. We're doing this in 2013. Not maybe, we're doing it. Not only do we have to work the celebrity, we have to work their management. That's the key to achieving our goal of an A-list guest every week and two B-lists. If a publicist is treated like God, they, they, they don't just represent one person. Who are we kidding? Look at the note. Dear Howard, thank you for joining us. It was a pleasure to have you on JKL. Please come visit us again soon. All the best, Jimmy and all your friends at Jimmy Kimmel Live. Jason already takes a picture. If a publicist says after an interview, hey, can I go in and get a picture with Howard? Take the picture and send them the picture, too, in a frame. We're going to do that. We're behind, man. We're, we're falling behind. And we've got to do stuff like this. And you got to think, you know what? You got to just think of everything. When I came up with this presentation for you, I was up till 2, 3 in the morning every fucking night because I was so pissed that we're not doing this shit. We respect the publicist. If a publicist says interview is over, Gary, I did this with you today. When Jules' publicist said she has to leave, I ended the interview. Why? I want to respect her or him. I don't know who it was. I want to respect these people. I want to say to them, we're pros, and we want to work with you. And now you'll have a relationship. Publicists get treated, treated nicer or, or better than guests because they're the ones that control this, this campaign we're on. When they're sitting in the green room, they're going to see a beautiful green room. They're going to be comfortable. They're going to be eating. They're going to be looking at our awards on the wall. They're going to go, hey, this show's pretty fucking cool. And by the way, when I told them that I had to leave, they listened to me. I like these people. Refreshments, elegant follow-up and thank yous. When is the last time we thank the guests for coming in here? Probably never. It's not going to happen anymore. So here's an action. You can write this down. Think of a great thank you list for a guest. What can we do to please a guest? Ralph, you got lots of ideas. I want to hear from you. There's a lot of people in here who make lots of suggestions, and then it kind of dies. Well, now you're going to be listened to. Give your suggestions.